Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. I'm really excited to have you here because this is going to be a super fun series that I'm starting right now. We're going to make a puko knife. A puko knife is a Finnish belt knife. It's an everyday, all-purpose belt knife. And uh, I haven't made one yet, and I'm super excited about this build. I've got some really neat ideas for you. The cool thing about a puko knife is you can make it out of recycled steels, all kinds of different things like that, saw blades, um, chisels, files, anything that you want to make because it's a long slender knife so it doesn't require a lot of steel. However, I do have a perfect piece of 1084 bar stock right here which I will be using for my puko knife. Uh, I am going to do some really cool things with this. I'm going to, uh, well, follow along. I'll show you. Alright, so I'm just going to talk to you guys throughout this entire build process. This is 1084 bar stock. Um, it is 3 sixteenths thick, one and a quarter wide, and we're going to make the blade that long. Because uh, that looks like how long a blade ought to be. And we're going to bring the tang out that long. Look good? Looks good to me. And a puko knife is fairly straight down the spine and it's real simple right like that that's what we're going to do that's our puko knife this here is actually going to be angled like that and we're going to bring the tip down to right about here so we'll reduce the back just a little bit um that's it guys so i'm going to use my trusty friend the four and a half inch angle grinder to go ahead and just cut this Alright guys, so here's my setup. I've put out a brand new bucket of cold water. I've thrown on a 36 grit belt that I've used several times before. The edges are all torn up, but this is going to be great for going ahead and hogging off the majority of the material. You don't want to use a brand new belt because you'll shed a lot of this abrasive uh, on these hard 90 degree angles. Uh, I've went ahead and put my work rest on and I've got my dust collection system here already set up. For those of you that haven't seen that yet, all that is is that's a, uh, a vent pipe with a floor flange and I put some rubber around it, installed it into a five gallon bucket, and then I, I ran this pipe all the way down to here, and then I've run my vacuum hose right there that pulls all the heavy debris and sediment to the bottom of the bucket, and then I'm not always changing the filter in my uh, shop vac there. That works really great, it keeps the sparks out of the shop vac too, so there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and hog off the majority of the material here. my blue layout die, Dicom. I bought this five years ago for $10. I still use it. I've done every knife with it. Excellent. I'll put a link down below for my Amazon affiliate. Now on this one, I'm gonna show you a couple different ways you could do this. I use this trusty height gauge right here for scribing all of my lines, but in case you don't want to uh, invest a, you know, $100 in a height gauge, which you certainly shouldn't have to do, you can use an, a drill bit for this. What I like to do is you can lay this on its side, find a drill bit that's slightly smaller than the overall thickness of the knife. You don't want it to be the same size or else the line of the drill bit will land right down the center of the knife and that's not what you want. 
this is what you want right here. So just a little bit smaller than a knife. And what you're going to do is you're going to lay the drill bit. In fact, instead of using the height gauge, I'm going to use this. You're going to lay the drill bit on its side so that you have the tip exposed. And you're going to run a line right down it, just like you would on the height gauge. And flip it over and do the same thing. And what you're doing is effectively the exact same thing. Check that out. You can actually see my tracks. Those are my grind two lines. I did that with a drill bit slightly smaller than the overall thickness of the knife. That way it gives me a line with about the thickness of a nickel in the center to grind to. I did that without a height gauge with nothing more than a drill bit that you should have on hand. If you're making knives, you should have a drill bit index on hand for sure. These are cheap. You can pick these up at Harbor Freight for like 25 bucks. As for the line on the side for how high you make the bevels, here's another cheap Harbor Freight tool. These are dial calipers. We're just going to come up. A Puko knife has uh, most of the time a grind about halfway up the knife. So that's what we're going to do. And all I'm going to do is just give myself a reference line. It doesn't have to be crazy. It doesn't have to be like ground in or anything like that. Just something that I can see as I'm grinding. This is my, my uh, pre-heat treat grind. It's not going to be perfect. All it has to do is be symmetrical so that I don't get any warps. The biggest thing pre-heat treat guys is that you, you, whatever you do, you do it symmetrical from one side of the knife to the other. What happens when you're heat treating the knife, when you're going, uh, when, when you quench the knife, whichever side of the knife that has the thicker cross-sectional density, the knife's going to try to pull in that direction. So say you ground this side off and you didn't grind this side. Since this side's thicker, when it quenches, it's going to try to pull the edge over to the thicker side. Therefore, when you grind a knife to an edge, a center point, if you have different variations through here, and you have thicker spots on one side, when it quenches, that metal quenches and pulls together, and what could happen is it could cause warps in your blade. So whatever you do, you just want it to be symmetrical on both sides, so when it quenches, you have your best opportunity to get a straight blade. So here we are. I've got a line right there and a line right there. What you could do, since this is pre-heat treat and it doesn't really matter, is just take your Sharpie and just run it on that line just so you have a very clear reference of exactly where you're going there. You know, not, not a big deal. Whoops. Got off there. There we go. <clears throat> that just highlights your line that you scribed in. Now, I'm not going to grind this out yet because that'll give me something to hold on to. I am going to grind this. I'm going to grind this. After I get those bevels ground in, I'll go ahead and shape this tang right here. This is a large Puko knife. Most Puko knives are smaller than this, but hey, I like big knives. All right, so we're still working pre-heat treat here, so I don't have to worry about keeping the blade cool. I am going to wear gloves. I'm going to run this belt. And the first grind, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind a steep grind right here into these grind two lines that I gave myself. That's going to get my edge thickness pretty much dialed in. And I'm going to use this worn belt because since I'm going to be cutting right into this fresh edge right here, it's going to shed a lot of abrasive off that belt. And there's no reason to ruin a brand new belt in this part of the process. So I'm going to go ahead and get this turned on, put on my mask. Grind this out. So this edge 
or this area right here is not perfectly thick and it doesn't matter. What does matter is that I've got it ground right to this line right there all the way up because that's going to keep my edge straight. Now I'll flip it over and I'll grind this right here and then I'll move into the next level of the bevel but I'll go ahead and switch out belts before I do that. So I'm going to go ahead and grind this on this side. So I've got that ground on that side and on that side. Now it's time to go ahead and work those bevels. I'm going to go in you'll see me grind a new flat that's going to stretch right here in the middle. And it won't reach the line and it won't reach the edge yet. And I'll, I'll work that flat and it'll slowly start to widen. And I will bring it towards the edge and towards this line at the same time. And I'll watch that flat in between each stroke. And if I see the flat needs to be worked a little more towards the edge, I'll add a little more pressure towards the top. And once I get it, you know, dialed in here, and if I see the flat needs to work a little more towards the top, I'll lean into it just a little bit this way, and we'll get this dialed in. That new flat you could see what I'm talking about see the new flat you could see the original flat you could see this flat and you could see the new flat that I'm working in you could see it shinier than the original and this flat right here and I will work this until I get the right bevel it should not come it should not come all the way to the edge because I established the edge with the first grind All right, there's, here's the first side, it's ground. I overshot my line just a little tiny bit right there. I'm not too worried about that. When I go to post heat treat, I'm gonna move this line up just slightly. But other than that, it's good near the tip. It's good back here. I'm good with that. Let's flip it over and let's grind this side the exact same way. Time to go ahead and rough out this tang area. This is the area that's going to sit within the handle and you notice I ran the grind right off the edge because this is going to get cut square across here and this cutting edge comes right up to the guard of the knife so no big deal there. I'm going to come in here I'm going to cut in a shoulder here cut in a shoulder here and grind out the general tang shape. Many of you know that I like to experiment, so I'm doing things different on this knife. I've not heat treated it yet, and I'm going to go ahead and sand it out before heat treatment this time. I'm going to go ahead and sand it all the way out, get these bevels dialed in, and then I'm going to do a clay temper on this. 
where I'm gonna do a hamon and try to get this clay to pop out. So I've actually ground the edge a little bit thinner. I've dialed these in to 80 grit. I'm gonna go ahead and take it out to 220 out here on the flats and the bevels. And then we're gonna mix up some clay and, and see if we can't get some cool figure on this, uh, on this bevel to pop out. Well, hey guys, that wraps up the first episode of the Nordic Puko knife build. Hopefully you enjoyed some of the cool tips and tricks that I gave you on grinding and, and beveling and things on a Nordic style knife. And uh, I'm gonna meet you in the next episode. I'm gonna put a link right here and we're gonna move right into episode number two where I do the heat treatment and really get that hamon to pop out. See you guys there.